I think I excerpted something from physics for C, magnetic force on a current carrying wire. And that's all fun and fine. Um, you see something that's moving, that's clear enough indication that there is a force on something that that's good. And what I want you to show here is a cleaner demonstration of um, magnetic force on a moving charge in a way that you can quite clearly sit um, without any, I don't know, complications or whatever. Okay, let me show you this uh, uh, magnetic force lab, uh, cyclotron motion. Yeah, so. In this video, we will measure the cyclotron motion applying different amount of accelerating voltage and magnetic coil current. This is the first video using the apparatus one. The electron beam is on right now at the maximum accelerating voltage, but it's not visible because the room light is too bright. Let me darken the room. All the lights are off except for the one torch flashlight on the video camera that's recording the voltmeter and ammeter. So this is the electron beam. Um, this bulb is filled with a little bit of, I forget what gas it is. It might be argon. Um, and as the electrons collide with the gas in the very thin um, uh, density of gas, it uh, produces this light, which is how you can see the electron beam path. Right now, it's, you know, it came out of this thing, accelerated, and it's going in a straight-ish path. We'll turn on the magnetic current, first in the clockwise direction. And let's see what the minimum value of current is that will give us a circle. about one ampere, so we will set it at one ampere. Now I'm, yeah, so that's the cyclotron motion. So this uh, curved beam path you see is the result of the magnetic force on a moving charge, which is described through the right-hand roll and, <laughs> um, and yeah, you, you get a circulating charge. Well, they don't really circulate, they end here, they strike something and then they're done. Um, but this is kind of a clear, very clean illustration of uh, magnetic force. And uh, in the, a bit of a, let me just play a little more of the video where I, where we go through some variation of parameters. Um, rotating the Lorentz tube, uh, making sure that the beam returns to itself rather than undergoing a helical motion. And we will increase the magnetic field by 0.2 ampere increment. This is 1.2 ampere. 1.4 ampere and this uh, smaller radius loop indicates the magnetic force the force that's providing the centripetal force is stronger and uh, it's stronger because the magnetic field is greater and the magnetic field is greater because the electric current on this outside the Helmholtz coils that's producing the magnetic field the electric current is greater 1.6 ampere and so on. For measurement, please pause the video so that you can make the measurement of the diameter of the circular path. Two rulers are shown on screen so that you can calibrate the scale. Please be mindful of perspective effect. The circular path is at about the midpoint yeah. between the two rollers. Okay, the rest of the video, um... So I do vary this accelerating voltage, which varies the velocity of the electrons coming out. But I don't think I recorded this in a way where you can clearly compare the effect of different velocities more easily without you know, doing all the data taking and all that. So let me not play the rest of the video, but this is the kind of clean representation of, um, of the, um, clean representation of magnetic force, uh, illustration of magnetic force. And oh, and I want you to show one more thing. It's uh, something called a cross the field setup. Uh, well, let me just uh, play it in and show. This is a setup that, this is, this is a setup that involves both magnetic field 
and electric field. This is the crossed fields measurement using apparatus one. This technique can be used to directly estimate the velocity of the electrons. Please note the precision of this technique is limited for a number of reasons. I am overlaying a white line here to indicate the undeflected path of the beam. Um, brief explanation, as I turn these knobs, I'm going to be applying magnetic field like before, causing the beam to bend. And what one of the other knobs about deflecting voltage is doing, it's, it sets up a voltage difference between these two plates. And that sets up an electric field between these two plates. So the fields that point mostly in the vertical direction. Now, as I apply the deflecting voltage at the maximum value of 250 volts, the, so what this is showing is that this is a beam of electrons. So this top plane must be charged positively, attracting the beam, and the bottom plane must be charged negatively that results in a you know, electric field pointing downward and on a negative charge that downward pointing electric field pushes it upward, the, the electrons upward. The beam path is deflected. And we will apply magnetic field with the current in the counterclockwise direction to deflect the beam back. Please pause the video where you see the beam at the location of the undeflected position and read. And this is where people doing the actual experiment kind of have to be careful. Electric field is very highly localized here and magnetic field is all over this entire space. So you have to be careful to note, okay, in this region, they're kind of canceling each other's effect. The magnetic force is tending to bend the beam downward, well, downward everywhere. But the electric force in this region is tending to push it upward. So within this region, you can find a place where the effects of the two fields are kind of balancing each other out. And with more math, you can relate those magnetic and electric field values directly to um, the, the velocity of the particle that's passing through undeflected. To the current value there for the measurement of magnetic field. I think that was all the interesting thing I would say about this. That would be around this position. Yeah. Please note that outside of the region between the electrodes, the electron beam will continue to bend under the influence of magnetic field. So you only have to look at the region between the electrodes. Yeah. Um, I think that's enough. Um, in fact, we're way over time. So. Those are the videos I wanted to show. I uh, think, uh, yeah, I guess that is the end of this playlist.